Just warning you, you're going to hear some background noise on this installment of the final wager. You might hear some seagulls crying, you might hear some boats going by, you might hear orders being called out at the lobster house across the water. Welcome to Cape May, New Jersey, where I am, I don't know, celebrating the end of the regular season. We've got two weeks left, those will belong to the teens, and I'm sure that will be a lot of fun. Katie, looking to become the first two-day champ all week, not in great shape. She's in third place with 4,800, still alive. In first place is Winston, he's got 13,4, and Jeff has 10,300. Let's start with first and second. If Jeff doubles up, he's going to have 20,600. So to cover him, Winston's going to have to wager 7,200. If he's wrong with that wager, he'll be left with 6,200. So that means that Jeff can wager up to 4,100, and Katie needs to wager something and get it right. So she might as well just go all in. Now for second and third. Katie doubles up. She'll have 9,600. Jeff can stay above her with a wager of no more than 700. Now this puts him in a predicament we've seen many times. It's not quite sure it's conjecture, but it's fairly close. Jeff has to decide between covering first, zero wager by first, and not falling below third. If he thinks that Winston's going to go for the lockout, then he could just wager 700, but if he's scared that Winston will go small, he'll have to go big himself, opening him up to losing to Katie. Let's look at rule number three. The difference between Jeff and Winston is 3,100, so on the larger side, if Jeff wants to cover zero wager, he'll have to wager that. And that puts his range between 3,100 and 41. So mind game is here. Fairly straightforward. Jeff has two ranges, so let's look at the upper end of both of those. If he wagers 4,100, he's going to have 14,400, so Winston could wager 1,000 to cover him. If Winston's wrong with that wager, he'll still have more than Jeff, so Jeff can't really improve that range. On the other hand, if, he, if Jeff wagers 700, Winston could stay above him with a wager of no more than 2,400. Now, if Winston's right with that wager, he's going to have 15,800. Jeff would have to wager 5,500. That would put him out of contention if he gets it wrong, so if he's scared of a small wager by Winston, he might as well just go for broke. Those are our ranges, and let's see how our players did. Katie got it right, wagered 4,700. A good wager, leaving $100 on the table. Not quite as bad as her $35.99 on Thursday, but hey. Jeff got it wrong and wagered 2,101, which makes sense if he thinks that Winston's going to wager the 1,000, but doesn't cover his ear wagers. So that's why he gets the pink. Now we go over to Winston, who also missed, and maybe Katie's going to be a two-day champ, but he only wagered 3,333 which, as Josh Wu suggested on my blog, might be in honor of my love of the Game 3s. I highly doubt that, but it's a good thought. Winston has the entire summer to learn how to wager. He's obviously capable of the trivia part and the buzzer part, and I hope he takes advantage of my blog. It's been a great year. We had a 20-day champion, 11-day champion, lots of five and six game champions. We're gonna have a lot of females in the TOC, which looks like it's gonna be during November sweeps. And as I said, we still have two weeks of teens left, so a good way to cap out the year. Looks like it might be time for a lobster roll. I'll catch you Monday for quarterfinal number one on the final wager.